just before starting, um, I have some things to say. First of all, uh, Mike and Eric, they met in the past, but they never had the opportunity to discuss. So uh, when they learned that they will be on the panel together, they were very, very happy. So I, I'm sure they will enjoy this discussion, but it's also important that you enjoy this discussion. So please, when you want, when you have a question, even when you disagree, feel free to raise your hand and Victor, who is around here, will uh, give you a mic. So it's very important that uh, the discussion includes you. Um, and then we'll start. And uh, I, I would like to ask you um, a question, but I'll read a text, all right? And then I'll ask a question. So the, the, the text is, society is demanding that companies, both public and private, serve a social purpose. To prosper over time, every company must not only deliver financial performance, but also show how it works, uh, sorry, how it makes a positive contribution to society. Do you know who said that? No? Have you heard about BlackRock, the investment fund, the biggest in the world? Yeah, you can raise your hand. Yeah, all right. So this is the CEO of BlackRock who said that. He even wrote a letter. All right, I must tell you something that when I heard about that, I thought it was a fake news. Uh, you know, uh, BlackRock uh, speaking about a social purpose. Anyway, why it's important? It's important because here we're going to introduce the concept of TBL, triple bottom lines. Basically, profit, people, planet. So profit, bottom line, I think you all know what it is, all right? You are all accountable for the people in your company who are asking you to make money uh, for the shareholders. And then when it comes to people and environments, uh, now it's quite obvious, but in 1994, when uh, John Eckington, he, he conceptualized this uh, theory, uh, it was kind of new. Uh, 10 years ago, you spoke about that. Uh, there was a report uh, speaking about CSR and, and sustainable, uh, sustainable development. But Profit People Planet, to make it short, assumes that company, they um, must focus on delivering uh, value and, um, to shareholders, to the people who work for them or who uh, consume their product or services, and then the environment. So um, I'll ask a question um, to Mike first. Um, and it's a question to Mike, you as a person. Um, should we put profit first? before thinking about uh, uh, social and environmental responsibility? Yeah, so it, it's, it's a common question, right? So why do they appear in this order? Yes, right? profit first. Yeah, um, and I think the, the, the short answer is, is it uh, the egg first or the chicken, right? So I think one of the nice things about Elkington's work is he originally creates this as a circle, as a cycle, right? So where do you start in the circle? Where's the beginning? Like it's anywhere, right? I think one of the challenges that, um, one of the things I like about Elkington is he actually says, um, your role is to benefit stakeholders, not just shareholders. So stakeholders are everyone in the community, you know, everyone who lives uh, in, in the community where you work. The, the stakeholders are, uh, all of the, the, the people as well as the environment around you. So there's a lot uh, to take in. I think one of the challenges about triple bottom line is the sort of models that we have for modeling profit are incredibly good. Like we've been doing this for a few centuries, right? We know how to add numbers and make them look like something. But we're not so good at this idea of adding, um, uh, figuring out how to monetize or add or quantify the environment or the people themselves. So I think it's typical to start with profit simply because profit is what we know, but uh, often NGOs and other organizations, it's very easy for them to start with people, like who's our community and what to do. So I don't think we have to start with profit first, uh, but we, we have to figure out like the full circle and not just part of it. And, and to be able to measure uh, the impact. Yeah from a social and environmental perspective. Yeah, measure and then also make visible. So that's another challenge. You know, recently we're doing pretty good at labeling product, yeah. like physical product. 
So now I actually maybe even know uh, the environmental cost of a product. Um, but that's not very common yet. Uh, this is also very difficult to do in, in virtual space. You know, Eric may have some things to say about this. How do I know what's going on in virtual space? What is my social and uh, uh, economic as well as environmental impact? All three of those, right? But I think we need uh, measure. We need uh, then visibility so that we can make choices. Thank you. Eric, same question. Um, I think when you, uh, when you create a, a company, uh, you need to think about profit and people, for sure, because you need to come with a purpose, not only for your market, which is you know, the, the people you want to serve, but also for your team and the, the reason why uh, they would want to be part of the adventure. So the, the people and profit thing is pretty well covered in general. Um, the challenge is, especially in software, to uh, pay attention to the environmental aspect of it. Um, and if it is not part of the, the values you gather around as part of the team uh, of people and you make an investment to measure it, uh, then it's easy to avoid it. And to, uh, to just uh, think you're doing great things without measuring yourself and since it's not data driven, you don't even know if you're improving and you cannot even show yourself what is your impact on, on that. Okay. So if we go back to APIs, I have one question, um, very concrete one, even if it maybe does not exist. Um, can we imagine APIs? I will use the word smart. You know, today we use smart for everything, smart cities, smart buildings, smart, I don't know, contract, whatever. Can we imagine smart APIs, API that, that will use some data to determine whether they should deliver information to companies based on uh, their, um, um, basically, the, the respect they show to uh, people and planets. Is, is this something possible today? Does it exist? Eric? <laughs> so, um, I'm, we specialized in delivering feeds, so we, we interconnect companies, so it's always part of uh, contracts. Uh, those contracts uh, are today with words, and those words cover the responsibility of each body. And more and more, we see uh, the possibility for including CSR clauses as well as environmental clauses. Uh, this is requested from our customer, and we're starting to request it from our uh, partners as well. So that's already in place in that when you sign, when you, when you have an API today that is distributing data to an aggregator or another vendor, there is a contract uh, to allow for the company to be using the service. And when you have this contract, which is part of the interface, then you can, uh, you can actually make sure that you, uh, you, you cover those two other aspects. Uh, what's missing uh, is for these contracts uh, to be, um, to be uh, negotiated uh, as part of the protocol, as part of a, a JSON descriptor, uh, but that's fairly easy to do now. If somebody starts doing it, uh, who's going to follow it? I don't know. And I think uh, to be pragmatic, uh, if you, if all of us were starting to um, uh, make sure we have those clauses whenever we we deal with uh, somebody else's API, then uh, it would virally diffuse uh, through a community. Yeah, I, I think this, th this idea of making decisions or uh, responsible APIs rather than just responsive, right, is about the labeling, right? So you just sort of mentioned it's certainly possible to do this in the contract. It's, it's possible to do it on paper with humans. Um, and it's also possible to do it with machines, but what we need is the mechanism, the labels. So if I, if I want to uh, build uh, with an API, I should be able to ask that API description to tell me what the social responsibility uh, index is, or, or tell me uh, who, who other connectors that you have, and th there can be this sort of score that I could use, right? But we simply aren't implementing this yet. So I think as we do more of this kind of work, uh, uh, we can implement that at uh, the time to build when I choose, but I think even more powerful would be the ability to implement that at runtime. So as soon as I connect to a feed, as soon as I connect to something, I have the metadata right now. Maybe I even understand 
how much energy I am consuming or how many people are affected uh, by the, me using this service as well. And this could actually be a part of how we, how we do things at runtime, the way we negotiate other aspects, I think. So it means that we can imagine APIs that will evaluate the social and environmental costs of um, its implementation of it, and then decide, okay, basically, uh, you're going to give me money for this service, but I know that the cost will be higher for the people on the planet, so I decide not to give you the information unless you accept to, um, to, 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 to um, cope with a, a certain contract, with certain rules. Is this something concretely possible? So, so I spoke about it theoretically. You actually do this. So, so you, is it possible? The researcher and the entrepreneur. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it is possible. Uh, everything is technically possible. The, it requires that any API vendor actually uh, makes an effort to measure the, its own uh, technical impact and translate it into uh, generally uh, accepted measures like uh, GSG, energy, and water impact, which are the, the three uh, measures. Uh, so we did a job ourselves for our own technology uh, for uh, an average customer. So a, a customer that is uh, streaming real-time data to uh, 40,000 mobiles for a day, uh, if we look at the consumption of every year, we're able to save the equivalent of uh, 323 French houses in, uh, in energy or 1.4 million uh, kilometers of a car uh, in terms of a CO2, CO2 impact and uh, more than 10,000 showers in terms of water. Okay. So it, it, it was investment to make that, mm -hmm. uh, but it was not a huge investment, uh, but we wanted to, um, to know it in order to be able to, uh, to assess ourselves and also uh, come to our customers with, uh, with that impact. Now, te technically, uh, could any, com any software company do this? Yes. A question here, uh, it's the beginning of this panel. Uh, how does it sound uh, within the organization? Uh, who already uh, has taken the path towards uh, this kind of responsible and responsive APIs? Can you raise your hand? Okay, no one. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, but still you're here, so it means that uh, this topic interests you. Um, so uh, if you have questions, once again, please raise your hand. Uh, it's very important to, uh, to create interactions. Um, when we speak about people, I mean, profit people planets, let's divide. Okay, we have people and we have planets. Um, planet, we, we, we speak a, a lot about that to, today. You know, uh, the COP21 and, and the withdrawal of the, of the U.S. Uh, uh, I'm not showing you, but, uh, <laughs> the withdrawal of the U.S. from the, the agreement. Um, but that, there is something very interesting, and we'll go back to environment later on. It's people. Um, today, we speak a, a lot about uh, artificial intelligence. Um, APIs are key, you know, in the attraction between the services. And, um, and Mehdi, an hour ago, he spoke about um, Mechanical, Mechanical Turk. Uh, does it sound familiar to you, Mechanical Turk, for everyone? Yeah? Please, once again, it's uh, important to, uh, to, to understand the, this concept. So basically, what does it mean? It, that uh, you can have a screen, and you can have uh, something that looks like a software in front of you that you are using to do a service. But in the end, instead of having a, an algorithm uh, doing the, 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 the mission behind the screen. It's uh, people doing that. And, and sometimes, and I would say often, um, it's people who are underpaid, uh, who live in Africa or Asia, who are doing that for an, a dollar a day, a dollar an hour, it depends. So uh, we're getting this, this topic. And sometime, someone said uh, a week or two weeks ago that 95% of uh, IA uh, uh, AI, sorry, is fake AI. <laughs> so uh, maybe the figure is wrong, but yeah. at least it, it gives us an idea. So we're getting this topic. Uh, how do you re react, Mike? And uh, what can you give yeah. us? Yeah. So so we were talking about this a little bit earlier, right? So uh, one of the one of the things I think we also, when we think of this uh, sustainability, we often focus on the planet because that original sustainability uh, in these last 30, 40 years 
was about physical elements, like physical power plants and cars and water supply and stuff. But as we move into the virtual space, we have to, I think, start shifting our gaze to uh, people, because I think there are lots of things about the way the, um, uh, the virtual space works uh, that it, it sort of makes people come forward and makes the uh, physical environment sort of recede. That's why you sort of had to do some work to find the physical environment elements. But you can see around a room how many jobs there are, or you can see in a factory how many people are being paid a dollar a day to work, right? So I think the same thing works. And I think it's really important in, when we move into this virtual space to understand the same kind of corporate responsibility. So in, f in physical space, if I, if I do clothing or, or something like that, I, have, I usually sign on to, you can inspect my plant and make sure that everyone is properly cared for and of proper age and so on and so forth. We may need to start, I think we need to start doing the same thing for IT, for virtual space. You know, you, you talk about this uh, AI. Uh, there were just a series of articles recently about uh, cryptocurrency miners in, in China. They're, they're actually living in pretty bad condition. And their only job, they live in a dormitory, and their only job is to keep the machines running so someone else can get the currency. And they, they don't get the currency, right? They're literally the mechanical Turks of, the, of that mining space. And we have these other examples that you talk about. There's somebody typing behind the scenes. We had this with gaming and so on and so forth. So when I use an IT product, I want to know what's happening behind the screen. I want to know if what I'm doing is actually creating Mechanical Turks, is actually dependent. So that labor-saving device for me, it may not be saving labor for someone else, but it may be a very uh, inequitable experience. So I think that's a real important in impact in that, yeah. Eric, do you have a word about that? Um, it may be different uh, view, yeah. but uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, why we're you here. You don't have to agree with Mike. <laughs> uh, let, so far, I stay positive on the possibility for technology and uh, uh, sustainable technologies to couple and create a, a world that's sustainable for us and our kids and their kids. Um, I think it takes a uh, huge effort. It's going to take a lot of uh, brain power to get to that world. I still believe it's possible to get to that world uh, and that we're not going to need to mutate in order to survive and go to Mars or whatever. Um, it's, it, it requires focus and this is going to create lots of jobs uh, if we do it properly and those jobs may replace some mechanical uh, programmable jobs that used to exist in the past um, but it could be for the good of humanity that technology happens to uh, help from a social perspective giving people a different job uh, you know when you look at how many developers are needed uh, not only in France but across the, the globe today and how many are available for the right skills uh, and uh, when you look at indeed the, the jobs that could be replaced by uh, servers, um, then we, we see the shift happening and, and I, I, I still believe that this shift uh, should generate as many uh, interest and happiness for humanity uh, or more than uh, before. So maybe I'm a positivist on that, but uh, yeah, that's an engineering uh, Yeah, yeah, so, so we, 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 we've, had, we've had discussions like this, right? So. I think we have to be prepared for a lot of jobs, jobs, not work, but jobs disappearing, right? Because in the last century, we removed uh, all the, the, this farming work, right? So in the US, uh, uh, about 100 years ago, um, we had uh, about 65% of jobs in the country were related to farm in some way. Now it's less than 3%, but we actually produce more food. So I think of the same thing in virtual space. We will remove lots of jobs. I think they will be removing programming jobs, right? That's sort of the farming of, 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 of this space. But we will have more information and we'll have better information. We'll have better quality information. Now, what happened in farming is we replaced farmers not just with machines, but also with chemicals. And those chemicals have been very, very uh, dangerous for the, for the planet part of that triad. And I think we need to be careful when we replace jobs in the virtual space 
that we don't create the same poison, so that we don't create some version of that same problem, we'll need to manage that as well. And that's why I think visibility is really important. So I think it's, it's one thing to talk about uh, work. There will always be work. There's another thing to talk about jobs. Uh, 200 years ago, most people did not have a job, but they worked every day. And we'll do lots and lots of work. We have a question here. Yes, yes here, sorry. What, what's your name? Simon. Simon, thank you. Um, very interesting topic. Uh, I, I just wanted to know, as an individual, or even as a business, how, I mean, today it's very hard to know um, how to choose a service, for example, uh, based on the topics that we're discussing here. Um, as an individual, it's, it's very, very complicated. And even as a, as a business, um, from all the talks that we've seen, it's, it's always more about the service that a particular um, uh, industry is, is giving rather than another. Um, and, and CSR issues are kind of left on the side, right? Um, what, what's your view as to how this, I mean, how can we make decisions based on, on these particular people and planet rather than just the service? So, uh, let, I would, uh, uh, let's say, one practical view of it is to, when you make a decision, uh, which is, for example, you have to select a vendor, uh, you make a grid, and in your grid, uh, you have a uh, weight for uh, not only uh, profit, which would be the usual purchasing decision, uh, but also people, and also uh, the planet. And when you start doing that, whenever you have to make a big decision, uh, you start seeing things sl slightly differently. Um, and it's possible. It, it's like, okay, well, I need to go to the train station. Uh, am I gonna take a cab or am I gonna take an RER? Um, that's, that's the typical decision. Or if I'm using, uh, or if I'm gonna stream data, uh, should I use stream data or, yeah. <laughs> or should I uh, get my uh, thousands of servers to do the job? You know, you could see things differently. So it's possible to actually make a decision grid including uh, those uh, three dimensions. So typically you, you have, uh, you're pretty heavy on the, uh, on, on the business and profit piece for you. Uh, then you can probably document something about people on your side. Uh, you can start looking at people uh, as your users, as well as the people working in the company you're about to, to buy from. And then in terms of planet, it's uh, the impact of selecting a vendor against another uh, for your, the impact of the service you're gonna give with that. So, so uh, okay, go ahead. Just, just yeah. to rephrase, because it's an inter interesting question because uh, when we speak with people like you who, who work in companies, they, 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 they ask us, okay, it's a great topic, but actually um, I have a lack of arguments. I don't know how to go to my uh, management team and tell them, hey, uh, we need to use this uh, uh, software or this company or this service instead of this one because this one is more responsible because in the end we have a lack of you know, uh, measures or KPIs which integrate uh, those data. So if, I don't know if you agree with that, if you can rephrase it. And how can uh, vendors or services can give you the, the right arguments so that you can convince uh, the board and the management team. So Yes, uh, so I think w when we were backstage, uh, you, you discovered something in, in a package and you say, oh, the first thing you did is you picked it up and you said, is it responsible? Yeah. And you were read it, right? And I, I, couldn't, right? I couldn't figure out because it was written in Chinese. Right, yeah, and that's the first thing, right? So I think some of the, I'm not sure if this is the question you have, but some of this has fine, I sort of understand the grid, but where do I find the bits of information? Where do I find the things to place? You, you had to do some of this, right? When, when you were creating your own. How did you, what kind of research or what kind of information did you have to discover in order to make these decisions about your own company? Um, in terms of, uh, let's say, the, the easy piece was to, uh, to understand what should be the output, which is a GHG, water, and, uh, and uh, uh, energy. 
uh, I knew my input, which was the uh, efficiency we, we bring. Uh, the tricky piece was to actually find a model uh, that was widely accepted, and there is one now for the European Union, to be able to, to assess it and link it. Uh, and we, we work with a consultant that I think is here, Frédéric Bandage, I don't know if he's... Uh, okay, all right, he's coming today, and we work together to uh, come up with the numbers. So, so, so there's actually, there is a, a, a sort of a, an index or a formula? What is, can you tell me, I don't know this, can you <laughs> send me, tell me a little more? So the, the, the formula comes from uh, the, the impact of building and using uh, IT uh, components. Yeah. So in our case, we looked at uh, mobile device, yeah. uh, the network in the middle, and the uh, API server. Uh, there are models for the impact of building a server, uh, building a network component, and then using it. Uh, and once you know uh, how much you save with, with your technology, you're able to know whether you have an impact on the build or on the use. So to, to give an example, we, we save battery, like 90% um, of battery on cell phones uh, related to uh, data consumption, but it's uh, nothing compared to the impact of building a mobile. So the best thing you can do uh, for the planet is to avoid uh, buying a new uh, mobile every year, as some vendors uh, want you to do. Uh, but then, uh, the, and the, the impact was more on the bandwidth side, and by far. So, so how, how can I find out more about the the the? This is the EU, is that right? This this EU uh, standard. I don't know this. I would love to know more about this. I'll uh, I'll give you the okay. I'll so, give you the link. So we we'll, we'll, we can share this maybe. Yeah, right? yeah. It's yeah. it's on our blog. It's on the stream that I Okay, blog. it's on your it's on your yeah. blog. Okay, it's on our blog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we there may be something. Does anyone know? There may be something like this in US, or maybe we use the same thing. Does anyone know this? Are okay, we need we US? need to find out. We'll we will need to share a page or something and and talk about this because I like this. I have two questions. First, Simon asked a very interesting question. Uh, uh, are there other people here uh, who are basically in their own companies um, asking the same questions regarding how they can uh, work with uh, more sustainable uh, services or software apart from Simon? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, quite good. So. What would be interesting that at the end of this uh, panel, uh, not, not at the end of this panel, but at the lunch, that you uh, six can have an interesting discussion, you know, how to create uh, interaction. It's, it's the beginning of the answer. And to, to go further, um, today, uh, how does it work? Because you, speak, you spoke about the, the AU. Uh, we have um, uh, activists and lobbyists which are trying to, you know, uh, who are trying to, uh, to push for new laws We'll say some uh, progressive law and some, um, okay, I'm not going to finish the sentence. <laughs> anyway, uh, so um, basically the law, like GDPR, for instance, GDPR is, is going to uh, set up a new world in, in terms of data. Um, can we, um, do we have to wait, do we have to wait for basically people in Brussels, in Europe, or in parliaments to uh, install new rules, new laws, to oblige companies to uh, cope with uh, those uh, questions, uh, and how entrepreneurs, how researchers, how you together can you uh, basically uh, be ahead of this of this movement? Yeah. So, so one of the things we, were, Eric and I, were talking about ahead of time, an observation that I have in in, in all the years is. Uh, often in the U.S., we have lots of entrepreneur sort of cowboy spirit. I will start an index. I will start a, 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 a group, a, you know, a, a revolution or whatever. And there's not a lot of coordination, so it's difficult in the U.S. because there are seven ways to measure something, or there are ten ways to solve a problem, right? And it's not standardized in some sort of way. So it takes a long time to get things working uh, together in the U.S. But I think. In, in the EU, in Europe, what I recognize uh, from, from my perspective, and it may not actually be true, but it seems that there's more sort of, well, let's get a standard together first, let's get a focus on this problem, and then what will sort of derive uh, an implementation from there, from that standpoint. So I think there's sort of a flip version, uh, and uh, what I find kind of interesting is uh, even though I just made this argument that in the U.S. It's, it's much more sort of cowboy spirit, 
I find more energy and more discussion of this sustainability topic when I visit Europe than when I'm in the US. I don't know if anyone else feels that way, but uh, I think there's a lot more awareness here in, in the, especially in the IT space than there, there is in Europe as well. I don't know if, if this, you operate in the US as well, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna. <laughs> um, wh when it comes to standards, talking about Americans and, and Europeans, uh, you know, the HTTP, which is the, the standard we all live by, uh, was invented by an, in, an American in Europe. So um, that might be yes. the, the, the perfect mix <laughs> of cultures. Um, now, in terms of uh, the, how do we do better together? It's a typical uh, uh, group issue. It's either uh, each of us do something about it and we hope that the majority actually gains. So it's the prisoner dilemma. Uh, or we wait for the the king or the whoever rules to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to actually oblige you to do it. Um, as far as we stand uh, as uh, IT leaders, which is uh, the case for all of you here, uh, w you can all have an impact on on those aspects. And uh, I consider this to be part of our responsibility because we are unfortunately a minority in the society, and we're leading the world. Um, in, in when it comes to IT. So if we don't do the, the right job ourselves, then nobody else is going to do it. So it's a matter of being responsible about it. All right. Do we have questions here? No? While well, well, we're waiting for questions, did I just hear you actually equate the sustainability challenge with the prisoner's dilemma? Is that, is that what I heard you say? Yeah. <laughs> so as long as we all like hold hands together, right? then we'll be good, right? But if one of us breaks, yeah. then it makes it difficult for everyone, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's, I, that's the first time I've heard it explained that way. That's, I think that's fascinating, right? So now I have to decide, am I in or out? Because I have to trust you. It, you. You need to be able to guess what's gonna be my behavior before you choose what your path is gonna be. Exactly, because if yeah. you invest uh, on your own and, and uh, I don't, then you're screwed and Right, and, in, and I'm not in the marketplace, right? So, and that's actually the way it, it's discussed, right? Is, uh, well, I'm not going to invest. I'm not going to do the research. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to uh, do things that are less effective because they're more efficient. Because my competitors will not do this, right? And that's really that that prisoner's dilemma pattern, right? So, who's who's going to blink first, or who's going to break from the standard, right? Yeah. And I think it's a it's a question also that uh, the people who are here. Uh, uh, they face, they are facing in the companies because basically, why, why would I do the first step if my computers do not that? And um, and I know um, a, a, a month ago I was speaking with a friend who spent two years in Pakistan uh, climbing the mountains, and he told me that in alpinism, you know, um, uh, you have to uh, uh, follow the rhythm of the slowest guy. Yes. Uh, and uh, saying that it means that you you should share. How do you do with the other ones? Because you know, if one, if someone uh, fell down the, in, in the mountain, all the, all the other will fall also. So um, it's important to, be, to understand that we are all in the same boat. So yeah. I, I think also to, to go back to your quote about Larry Fink, right, with BlackRock, right? So, so Larry ma writes this letter in January and then he repeats this at Davos, right? Is that uh, investors want, uh, to know what your social responsibility is, right? That's a bit of that sort of prisoner's dilemma challenge, right? It's, so that's somebody who represents a great deal of potential profit saying, I'm going to recommend to my investors the companies that show me this, right? So that's all, it's almost sort of the, the king on the profit side. There's a, somebody who's gonna sort of say this and sort of make this statement to try to goad others into it. So. Mm -hmm. It could, it could be that at the end, the uh, financial markets uh, save us of the uh, prisoner's dilemma, because if you, if you look at the, the frequency of uh, what was supposed to be 100-year uh, events uh, in various countries uh, that is now happening every five years, um, it's actually costing a lot to insurance companies, and insurance companies are actually uh, making sure that uh, they stay in business and they are the ones investing in funds like BlackRock. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it, it didn't do this for the, for the planet, but, uh, 
as a, he, he was responsible towards his main investors, and they all understand that you know, uh, on the long run, they're going to fail if uh, if things stay this way. Uh, and the other thing with financial markets is that they uh, they have now crafted index, uh, you have the Dow Jones Sustainable Index, uh, that you can be part of only if you're a large company, but uh, also that when you meet some CSR uh, criteria, so which is uh, an easy way to, to have an idea of uh, what vendors you deal with, except for startups. Um, and overall, uh, investing in, uh, in responsible companies is a good way for any of us to, uh, to actually vote with our feet towards the kind of world we want for our, um, for our kids. Uh, one thing I wanted to, to add is that... Um, th it's, it's your last word. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, the, the creating you know, sustainable index and uh, is, is, uh, see, would seem naive, but uh, what's happening is that there are uh, trillions of dollars that are shifting right now between uh, baby boomers and their grandkids. So the, the millennials are actually uh, getting to take investment decisions, and their investment decisions are way more responsible than uh, what we've been doing in the past because they've been living in a world where they could feel some stress on the social and uh, environmental side. So as we get millennials making those decisions and then actually uh, investing in uh, responsible funds, uh, the money will uh, will flow where it should, and and uh, and that should help many companies to decide the right way. Okay, it means that we have to have a discussion because I'm writing an article right now that is saying that uh, millennials uh, do not exist. So, <laughs> but uh, it's it's in, in a topic. So I, I will thank you very much. Could, could, could I just? I, yes. need, I need to I need to defend this baby boomer generation that's sitting okay. here, right? So uh, I, I, think it works, I think it works in lots of ways. As, as like one of the youngsters who was out on the very first Earth Day in 1972 and collecting you know, trash and stuff, I, th I think what we have is we have this, we have this mix of, of intelligence about our impacts uh, through lots and lots of generations. What I think is really challenging us now is what we have now is more evidence, right? So yeah, so it's more data and it's it's more more tangible. So I, I, I love this idea, and I, I would just kind of repeat the, the the other thing that we've talked about is we need to move past the balance sheet on those other two legs of the stool, right? So um, not just the profits and not just the planet, but the people. Yeah. I think especially as we move to virtual world, are, are going to actually come to the forefront. The people who use products and the people who actually drive the products are going to be a key to this sort of sustainability idea. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, before leaving, I have two takeaways. First one, uh, the six people and the other ones who are interested in um, discussing more about this, please, we can gather during the lunch, let's say at uh, Stream Data booth, all right? Uh, but we'll go uh, in front of the API Academy booth so that, you know, no jealous. So please, it, it would be interesting, you know, to create, uh, without being too ambitious, to create this network of people who are interested about that, to share knowledge. And second takeaway that is much, much more ambitious is this kind of index of responsible APIs um, that we could create so that uh, people like you, Simon, and the other could know where to use re APIs which are responsible and that bring value not only to the shareholders but also to the stakeholders, to the people, to the planet. So thanks for this conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. And now uh, another keynote will uh, come out. Thank you. Thanks.